Hello and welcome back to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and I hope that you have watched the previous two videos on PLSQL. If you haven't, they have been linked down below. They will help you to better understand today's video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about functions in PLSQL and also how to name identifiers correctly in PLSQL. So let's begin. In the last video, we saw how to create a procedure and how to display several messages using a procedure. Now, suppose I do not want to actually display that message right in the command line, but I want to save that message. Maybe I want to pass it to some other program or I want to display it in my web browser. So in all these cases, what I want is to return the value instead of just printing it or displaying it. So in that case, I would be using functions instead of procedures because functions allow you to return value back instead of simply printing it out. So let us see how you can create a function in PLSQL. So let's create a function in PLSQL. We are going to write down in order to create a function, create or replace function. Now you will be very much familiar with create and replace already. If you have watched videos of PLSQL on procedures and I've linked them down below. So create or replace function. In those videos, we were writing procedure. Here we are just going to write function instead of procedure and then the name of the function. So I'm still going to print the hello message type of thing. So it's going to be the same. It's just a function instead of a procedure. So I'm writing hello message. This is the name of my function. After this point, I need to mention the parameters. So my parameters will be mentioned in a bracket. And the parameter that I have is place as an in input. And that's why I'm going to write the keyword in and then the data type. So the data type here is variable character. And that is the input that I'm taking. So the place is the name of, of a place. And I'm going, I, what I want is to return a message that says hello and then the name of the place that I received. So this has one special thing which does not come in procedure, which is return. So you're going to write down here return and the data type of what is being returned. So the data type is variable character once again. So that's what I've mentioned. And after that, you will write the keyword is. This shows that the procedure is now going to begin. And so we will write the keyword begin at this point. And here I'm going to mention return because all I want to do is return this message. I don't want to print it. So I'll return this message. I'm going to return it with the word hello. And I'm adding a little space here so that, you know, uh, when it prints, it prints hello and then space and then the name of the place instead of just printing both together. So hello space and then concatenation and place which is my variable that i declared right here which i would be getting as an input so once that is done i can just put a semicolon here and that's it i will end this by writing end hello message and my procedure not procedure sorry function is now ready to be implemented so control A and control C, copy this code. And then you can come here and right click, edit, paste. Now it's the correct code, the function. And once that is done, press enter and forward slash. It says function created, so there are no errors. And that's how you create a function in PLSQL. This subprogram that we have here is different from a procedure 
because number one, instead of writing the keyword procedure, I have used the keyword function. So it is a function and not a procedure. And the difference is that instead of um, just implementing the action, there is also something being returned in this. So you see there is a return clause that is given right in the bottom. And there's also this return clause mentioned after mentioning the parameter to be taken. So this return clause allows you to return some value to the uh, PLSQL block that is actually trying to call this procedure, uh, sorry, this function. So now this function can be used by you in several ways. And we are going to see now how to use this type of a function and how to call it uh, from different programs. So this is the function we created last time, right? And we also implemented it here. You can see it is all implemented. It says function created. Now we are going to see how to use this function. So one way to use the function is to directly call it. And that's what I'm going to show you first. So what I will do is I'll simply write down this code right here because it's very small. So declare, and I'm going to declare one variable, which is message with variable character two and size 100. Then I will begin. And what I'm going to do is write down message equal to hello message. Hello message is the name of my function. And here I'm going to pass what I want to say hello to. So I'm going to pass world and a semicolon. And once that is done, let me also print this message. So dbms underscore output dot put underscore line and message. So this message should get printed. And then we end this block and semicolon and forward slash. And you can see it prints hello world right here. Very correctly. There is no problem at all. Right. So I can call a function inside a PLSQL block. That is one way of doing it. Another way of calling this function is calling it inside a PLSQL procedure. So let us see how we can uh, do that. So I'm going to create now a procedure. And once again, I'm going to do it right here in the command line. It's not a very huge code. So let me go ahead and do it. Create or replace procedure. And uh, if you remember in, in one of my videos on PLSQL procedures, I made a procedure called hello place. So now I'm going to make the same procedure, but this time I'm going to call the function inside the procedure. So hello place. And in this next line is the parameter. So I'm passing, uh, getting this parameter called place as an input. So I'm writing in and the data type and then is. Is shows that this is the point where the procedure begins, executable part. And then we can write begin. And in this position, you can write, you can print this as dbms output dot put underscore line. And you can print here the same hello message. But this time, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to write hello message. This is my function. So I'm calling my function from inside a PLSQL procedure inside a DBMS output uh, function. So it can be done in this way. And this is very nice actually that you can use function in so many different ways and call it in so many different ways. So now let me, uh, let me just uh, type in place. And this is a semicolon. I can end it now here. Okay. So in the end, I will just uh, write down the name of the procedure and it ends there and forward slash. 
size procedure created. Now let me call this procedure and see if it works or not. To call the procedure, we will write begin and then we'll just write hello place and I'm going to pass the name of a place. Let's say, uh, let me pass in this case, um, India. Only one thing and then I can end it and forward slash and it says hello India and it's successfully completed printed so you can call a function from inside a procedure in PLSQL. Now the third way to call a function is to call it in SQL statements. So this is where you'll, you'll see a very good integration of SQL with PLSQL. So this function works just like all the other functions that you might have studied in SQL like string functions and date functions and all those things which are available. So this is also another function that you have created and is available. In order to show you this, I'm going to first just uh, clear my screen and I'm going to create a simple table. Okay, let me call it message table. So create message table. So it's a very simple table and I'm going to call it message table. And in this table, uh, what I want to insert is uh, two things. One is the message date, the date on which I'm sending the message. And the second part of the table is the message text. And obviously I need to mention the data type. So date will have the date data type and message text will have the variable character data type of size 100. And let me just um, close this and oh I forgot to write create tables. So create table message table and it is closed and semicolon. So table created. Let me describe it. Message table. Yes, it is the same as what I intended it to be. And let me see if there is any data inside. Obviously it's not, but you know, I just want to show you. So select star from message table, no row selected, which means there is no data inside. Okay, let me once again just clear the screen. And now I'm going to write a PLSQL block and in that block, I'm going to, using that block, I'm going to insert data into this message table. So let's do it. So first I'm going to write begin, and then I'm going to write a query to insert data. So insert into message table and the column names, which are message date, comma, message text. These are the column names in message table. And what am I going to insert? I'm going to insert some values here. So I want to insert values. And as date, I'm going to insert my system's date. So today is 5th September when I'm recording this video. So it's going to insert that as a date. So to insert your system's date, you have to write down the function sysdate. This will insert system's date. And Next, as a message, I'm going to call that hello message function that I created and going to pass the name of a place. Let me pass uh, UK in this case. So I've passed the name of a place and close the bracket twice because you opened it twice, I suppose. Yes. So there is insert into, there's bracket, bracket and values and bracket here and bracket here. So I have closed all the brackets and semicolon and end. And in order to run this, I have to do a forward slash. And it says procedure successfully completed. Um, now let us see what happens in my table. So I'm going to do select star from message table. And you can see there is a message inside. And it also shows my system's date, 5th September 2020, and the message is Hello UK. So this is how you can call functions in so many different ways in PLSQL. 
let us now understand the rules that PLSQL has for giving names to programs and functions and um, variables. So let's check it out. So these are the rules to name variables or identifiers. The first rule is that every identifier should be of maximum 30 characters. So it cannot exceed the 30 character limit, whatever name you choose to give it. And the second condition is that the first character of every identifier must be a character, must be an alphabet, either a, a lowercase alphabet or an uppercase alphabet. And after the first character, the second character onwards, whatever else you put after the first character, doesn't have to be necessarily an alphabet. So after the first character, you can either have an alphabet or you can have numbers, you can have uh, special characters like hash, dollar and underscore. These are the things that are allowed once you have the first character as an alphabet. Let's take a look at some of the valid um, identifiers. You can see them on your screen right now. These identifiers are valid identifiers and they will not give you any error. Now let's see some uh, identifiers that are not valid. So you can see here, these identifiers are not valid. And as a last note, I would like to say that PLSQL identifiers are completely case insensitive. So writing hello underscore world all in small letters or capitalizing the first letter in each word or writing everything in capitals, it all results into the same identifier. So it doesn't matter whether you are consistent with, consistent with uh, writing everything in capitals or small letters or mix, mixture of both. It's going to be the same thing because it is case insensitive. So that's all for this video and I'll see you in the next video.